guys, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough, and yeah, time to do a little recording. Um, I haven't done one on the Egypt holidays for a while, so I thought I'd keep to take you through one or two more days. Um, so um, I am working on um, my Lion Cup custom I got from Die Moon Shop. Uh, which is around uh, a 50 by 62 so uh, if you actually are interested in this one that I'm working on I'll do a self plug again I will put the link down below um, but it's um, custom in Die Moon and is available for anyone to purchase and I actually do get a commission of the uh, of it as uh, the artist of the work, which is fantastic. Anyway, back to let's get to the reason why the what I'm doing here with this whip and chat. So, Egypt um, last last part of Egypt we went to was uh, Luxor and. No, I was Ebedu, Ed, Ebedu, um, Edfu and Komobu was, I think was in the last recording that I did. Um, I think I included some footage of travelling up the locks or down the locks to Luxor. Now in Luxor I stayed on the boat one night so we got into Luxor I did some tours which I'll talk about shortly and then uh, stayed on the boat that night and then I disembarked the following day uh, yeah woke up in the morning and basically got up on top of the boat up on top top deck because the, the top deck of this boat is where the bar is. Um, it's also got the swimming pool and all the seating, and it's a you know that that's where you go to look at look out at the scenery. Um, but got up and it was a beautiful still morning, and so there's a couple of pictures here. Um, I will take you through where there's. Some boats, some some of the Felucia boats on the water, and it was just beautiful. It was absolutely stunning. Still had the lights on. It was still it was still um, dawn. And I still had the lights on, so it was, it was pretty and serene. Okay, so from there, I'll actually show you one <laughs> picture here. See, make sure I remember to put it in here of the the gangplank or the gangway that you walk to get off this boat and I'll tell you what <laughs> it's kind of skinny <laughs> but uh, yeah and then so the day that we did was um, we we're supposed to tour Luxor um, but the um, Red one changed it around he because he turned around and said what we'll do is we'll do Abydos and oh where was it Abydos and Dandara okay Abydos and Dandara on that day um, because that's a full on day We'd get a lunch made for us because we're still part of the on the on the cruise, so they make a, a pack lunch for you to take away. And hang on a sec. Good old ice machine going off again. Not sure if you could hear that. Okay. Picking another number, picking another number. I haven't been doing this diamond painting for long enough to actually know when I'm looking at the right, what colour I'm after next. Um, um, oh, um, I don't know, I might as well go this top one. See how we go, finding number twos. 
<laughs> Looks like there's only a couple there. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> we swapped the days around so that it, um, the full day that I was having touring Abydos and Dendara was um, covered with a, a, you know, a packed lunch. Yeah, so obviously um, this had been done a few times uh, in changing stuff around. Um, the road run was very experienced with that. Now, Abydos and Dendara was an additional choice for me, so an additional um, section. It's a section that I actually requested. So I, I had actually requested to be And I, um, I had actually requested to see Abydos and Dindara, Dindara. Now, the reason bef behind that is um, as a train controller, working in the train control, um, up on our site, up at work on the train line, there is actually a station limits called Abydos. So I found it really amusing to discover that there was an Abydos in Egypt and when I've got to go to Abydos. So yeah. Excuse me for the yawn. Always happens when I'm recording. Okay. The Abydos was is um well, to get there was a requirement for a <laughs> security escort, which was rather humorous. Uh, because you get to a certain stop point um, and then you wait for security to turn up and security is basically um, a ute with a heap of guys on the back with um, guns yeah it's like oh uh, shit okay so I really do need escorting <laughs> here <clears throat> and then uh, we proceeded to head off so I was in a minibus, so you know, seating for 12 in the back, only me in there, um, which is the way all my tours went. And yeah, off we went following this ute. Now, you get there and think, oh shit, you know, I need security, how bad is it? It's not that bad. <clears throat> yes, there is, there is a risk, all of Egypt there's a risk, regardless. Um, but it wasn't as bad as it, I thought it was going to be. I think they oversold um, the requirement for security. But you never be. If I didn't have it, you know, and something happened, it'll be. It would have been a bit horrible. But the reason why that I say about the security is because they got on their you with their guns and took off, and we followed them. And we lost sight of them. They were so far ahead of us, speeding along, that we lost sight of them. And there was vehicles in between us and them. And yeah, it was basically security going through and saying, we've got, we've got tourists coming. And they were too far away if something happened to actually do anything or prevent anything. Their response would have been after we'd been hijacked or whatever. But yeah. That was the way it was over there. So um, the drive took a while to get there. Um, part of Abydos, when I did the research of Abydos, it was um, there's some carvings there that supposedly show um, what's the best way to put it that look similar to. <coughs> um, a spaceship or a uh, submarine so there's a car there's these carvings of, of that fit in um, that they've got on in Abydos and it looks like either spaceships um, there's also one that looks like a helicopter in the same spot so there's a lot of questions about that one um, in relation to that that being <clears throat> being carved in and where did they get that and that's the only place that I know of or that I've heard while I was doing my research that 
that was there. So I will try and pop in pictures of that. Um, it's obviously it's not there wasn't a lot of tourists. So it was really strange to go through. There was some tourists but not many. Um, but there'd been other places there'd been numerous tourists and then but basically we got there and it was really quiet. There was no tourists outside. I think when we went in, there was actually, I think we bumped into one group of people. But um, I don't think Abydos is high on the list for people to see. But I'll pop some pictures in here uh, to share with you so you can have a look at them of Abydos. Um, there is a big scarab beetle at the front, although you can't tell it's a scarab beetle. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm having a look through. There's, okay, now to remember there's, in this, there's, in Abydos, um, there was rooms with what they class was doors on the end. I see, did I, yeah, doors on the end. Now, of all the hieroglyphics, hello buddy, always come to say hello. Of all the hieroglyphics, that they've managed to interpret to read in Egypt. The actual, the at the end of these rooms, there's these doors, the actual hieroglyphics that are there, they are not like any of the other hieroglyphics. And um, text, the interpretation of them, they haven't been able to interpret or, or work out what these hieroglyphics mean because they're nowhere else in Egypt um, and it is believed that to get through these doors you need to know what is on those hieroglyphics uh, be able to read them and that is the way to the after afterlife um, so yeah it's something that's got apparently the, the Egyptian this the well, the, the, the oh, I can't even think. The, the, gosh, I still can't remember. Um, the specialists or whatever it is that the the professors or whatever it is that, that go into understanding and the trying to work out what hieroglyphics are. Um, yeah, they can't see. They can't read it. They don't know what it means. They can read it, but they don't know what it means because the hier those hieroglyphics are so different to anywhere else. Oh, I've still got clear plastic on that bit. Um, okay, hang on. This is why I don't like clear covers. This is what gets me on clear covers, is being able to work like this, because I can't see it. Uh, tweezers. some of it oh, experts is the word I was trying to look for so the the experts on hieroglyphics and Egyptology and that they they didn't they weren't able to interpret what, what it is um, but yeah they believe that if you can decipher what is on those doors you'd be able to open the doors and go through to the afterlife that's the theory but yeah um, so yeah I'll show you that door and then um, I'll actually show you what's written up there so so you can actually have a close look at what's at the end of end of the you know to, uh, uh, above at the top of the above the door this, the, where the text is, is how to get in, is their belief. Um, yeah. And there's holes in and they can't, they see, you can see the holes in the door, holes in it. So they've tried to get in and can't work out how to, I don't know. Um, there's some well-preserved colours 
inside Abydos Temple. Um, absolutely amazing to see how well preserved these colours are. You've got some pale blues, you've got the ochre colours, the yellows. Um, and then you've got, was that it? Oh, okay. I don't know whether that was it or not. Yeah. And I've got a little bit of where the, well, basically it looks like a helicopter. At the top right um, is the one that, you know, causing a, a bit of a, that looks like a helicopter or a spaceship or whatever up there. Um, and then at the back of the doors, at the back of the temple is this mess of, uh, that they're, they're currently excavating and working their way through, um, you know, slowly. <laughs> I don't think anything happens fast in Egypt, but um, yeah, they're slowly they're working their way through another ruin, it's a lot of ruins and stuff, and digging it out that's behind the temple. Um, yeah, I think Egypt's a place where they'll just continue to dig and dig and dig, and they will always find stuff. Okay, so from Abydos we went um, we went to Dendara. So when you drive through, um, hang on, yeah, from we went when we left we went, left the Abydos to go to Dendara. Now, when I was driving to Abydos, you were in this section where you know, you're tra driving in Egypt on the east bank of Egypt, uh, which is the lush side, which is where everything, is, there's so much greenery and bougainvillea is. It's not what you picture of Egypt. When you think of Egypt, you think of all the dust and the dirt and um, desert, whereas the East Bank is where all the life is and it's so lush and green. Um, when I went to Dendara, that's when you see what Egypt um, was pretty close to what you think Egypt brings to mind, the image that you get. But on leaving Abydos, there was this sign that says Abydos, um, which I'll show you here, with um, some poles sticking up that are red and white striped poles. That is actually where there's a train track going through. They, they cart um, the sugar cane on trains. So there's a little train, what, train line that goes through Abydos. So I actually got to and managed to get the driver and Radrun to stop so that I could take a picture. And they're, they're a bit baffled about why. But they stopped so I could take the picture. I didn't get out of the car, I was still in the car, but I took that picture of Abydos um, because of, well, where I work and the meaning behind it for me. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, that was, yeah, they were, they were a bit thinking that I'm a stupid, you know, Westerner, you know, why the hell would I want to look at something like that? But yeah, that gets a few laughs at work every now and then. Oh, and it's better. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see where I'm going to start. There we go. So then, yeah, so we were driving back, driving, leaving Abydos, heading to Dendara, and there's a couple of pictures of just how lush some of the places are. And then we get to head towards Dendara, and Red One and the driver sounded like they were having an argument uh, at one point. And Red One place pointing one direction, and the the driver going this way, you know, it looked like they were actually arguing about 
which direction to go. <laughs> so yeah, I've got this thought of they're arguing because we're going the wrong direction. Where the hell am I going? And yeah, I got a bit concerned. Um, it's a fairly long drive. It was through desert. It was a you know through desert area. It wasn't real desert desert, but it was through a desert area. Um, basically, there was dirt and road and power um, power lines on section. So it was like you know there was nothing really around to tell you any idea of where you were. <laughs> but I sat back and watched a little bit of a hissy fit in the front seat between these two and went, well, hopefully I'll get there. I hope that's what they're arguing about. Um, but yeah, we, obviously we got there. Now, the importance of Dendara. Um, they're doing a lot of excavation at Dendara. Um, I don't know, is it Dendara or Dendara? Um, they're still working, obviously, yet again, still doing excavation work and digging for, uh, for monuments and stuff. But this is where they... What was it? You see, I saw depictions of um, Cleopatra and Caesar are actually carved into um, this temple. It is carved in at the back of the temple, um, but yeah, it's you can see where uh, the image that I show you is. There's two, oh, hang on a sec, where did I see that? I missed that, I saw a H and then I've missed it again. There it is. Um, uh, yeah, so the reliefs on the wall, um, Cleopatra the seventh, Cleopatra the seventh, um, which is the Cleopatra everybody knows uh, um you know elizabeth taylor played cleopatra the seventh um but there's her and caesar um the there's two taller people um carved in one is cleopatra and the small one is is um caesar which is pretty cool there is also a massive list of all the crowns that you see in Egypt. Um, there is now there's a there's a, a box area which you've got palm trees in. That was actually um, a swimming area. Um, quite a big swimming area, all enclosed so that um, yeah you were protected in there. Hang on, I'm just looking to see. Is there any more ends? No more ends. Yes, there's another end. Always get rid of it. Oh, let's go. Um, yep, that's it for the end. Um, Excuse the silence. Excuse the silence. I was on it again. All right. So from there, we there's there's also um, inside Dendara up on the roof. Um, there's a few <laughs> interesting things to see. Um, in the top section, there's. Um, hang on. I'm just trying to find. Just, I'm just going to pop some pictures in here where I've had to actually go down into a tunnel. Um, basically, I've had to squeeze down and crawl on my knees and go through a tunnel to see some of the the work that is really so preserved. Um, what was it about this? And then from there, we went right up to the very top. Um, 
what symbol am I doing? There we go. Right up to the very top. Um, yeah, so there's some interesting little rooms that you go into and have a look at. One of them was a um, chamber. Oh, I can't remember the story. But you can actually see this this uh, picture that I'm showing you is actually the bed chamber. Um, yeah, there was a story behind that about the pharaoh that was there was or something. I can't quite. I oh, know. I won't even go through into the story because I can't fully remember. Um, but yeah, we've done that, had a look, and then we've gone back down right, right on the bottom and then um, Red One turned around and he pointed out and he goes, there is depictions of the Zodiac. So so um, all the star signs of the Zodiac are represented up on the roof or on, on the ceiling in this pale, with a pale blue colours in it. Um, you know, they were hard to see from the eye, but you know, can zoom in and you can see Aries, Taurus, Sagittarius. Um, I'll just show you, put in a, just a little picture, a little bit blurry, um, but the representation of the stars of the zodiac was up there. Um, so, yeah, that was Abydos and. Dendara. Um, after having a look at that, we've gone back to the ship um, and just relaxed. But I mean, that was a that was a full day. It wasn't just a quick visit. It was you know a couple of hours travel from to get from Luxor to Abydos and then to Dendara. Um, I think while I was in Dendara, the shopping, I bought a beautiful silk uh, scarf, which I gave to a friend. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was just um, a nice little stuff. I'm glad I did it. Um, oh, that's something. Leaving Abydos. <laughs> yeah, how we, I, I drove in with an escort. When we left Abydos, there was no escort. So it was like basically you got in there, you're safe coming out. It's just going in, you're not safe. It was so stupid. So the security was all just a, a, a front, in my opinion, um, for, for Abydos anyway. But you got to be safe in countries when you go to countries like that, especially when you're on your own. And you don't pay, well, part of the tour is paying for, for the security. So... Um, yeah, regardless of what tour you're on or if you're in a group, you would have paid for that as part of the tour anyway. Um, okay, so from there we spent the night. Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to get to the right spot. Yeah, just going to get to the next lot of images so I can show you. So... Luxor. When um, so the, the next day was just a case of um, what well, was pack, I packed up my bags the night before and it was getting off the off the um, off the boat. Now the night before, you know, you get told that um, you know, Red One turned around and said, "Custom is is that at the end of this end of this on in the morning." They'll leave you an envelope in your cabin tonight and in the morning you hand it over with a tip for how you feel about um, your service and all of that. And if you actually have any of the staff, um, if you have the name of any of the staff that you really did like and were really good to you, um, there's one I missed. Yeah, this is when you grab an envelope and put that staff name, staff name down, and they get a tip specifically. But all in all, the tips go usually go into one envelope, and then get shared amongst 
everybody so it's not just the staff you see it's also the staff that you know the ones that run the boat that you don't see um, they all get a share on the tips um, but you can do one envelope for a specific um, person on the ship if they were really exceptional but this is how they share the tips out amongst the whole crew on the ship um, I actually had the two guys that were working on on the bottom floor um, that looked after my room they actually made sure that I knew their names I, I am this and I am that I can't remember what their names are not important now but at the time they were is important for them so that if I wanted to give them an extra tip um, I had their names but it was very forceful type thing you know, it, it, you know. Um, as an Australian I am so not used to tipping um, you know you don't you never know what to tip off as an Australian I don't never know what's appropriately in tipping um, yeah but basically I felt so left out of everything as in you know my room they didn't even it, when I arrived it looked like they didn't even have my booking for my room and my room looked like it was thrown together as a last resort as an emergency room with a single bed in a room that should have had a queen or a king size bed and you know I was not happy so I don't know whether it was wrong of me but I was not happy I was not prepared to tip because the the service that I got on the ship I wouldn't call service it was yeah it was non-existent the only time I really saw the cabin boys um, was when they were letting me know their names you know it wasn't that I saw them um, yeah um, I mean one of the nights I will show put up I'll see if I hopefully I've got a picture of it and if I do I'll put it up you know they basically they scared the crap out of me one night by hanging one of those and I love the towel I do love the towel animals that they do but they hung it from a coat hanger and it was hanging directly in my doorway and it scared the crap out of me you know I, I yeah if I was um, yeah a little bit weaker I probably would have well I did I did let out a squeal when I saw it um, but yeah I didn't I didn't appreciate that uh, I mean yeah, yeah just overall so I was a very bad tipper for that for the cruise um, but yeah not that I'll be back there any time soon so it doesn't really worry me um yeah so um, got off the ship uh, got off the boat, not a ship, it's a boat, and we went, got on the bus, and we were off on our next little bit of a sightseeing tour. I was taken to, um, actually, I'll, I'll pop in here. This there were some photos. I've just spotted them there. A photo of. The ballooning in Luxor. Now Luxor apparently is well known for the balloons and your hot air ballooning is what I'm referring to. Um, they're well known for their hot air ballooning. Um, I was asked if I wanted to do a trip, do a um, hot air balloon trip which I politely said no thank you. <laughs> um, yeah although a lot of people do it yeah no not for me I would probably do hot air ballooning with Nathan um, but not solar I could not could not um, go on something that goes so high without someone I know beside me yeah no <laughs> uh, but yeah there's a beautiful picture of the hot air balloons up in the sky you've got the felucca there in the Luca Mars in the background, in the foreground. 
Okay, so we went, our first trip in Luxor was towards the Valley of the Kings. Um, got to the Valley of the Kings and, you know, like I've paid for the entrance and the main tour, you know, to go in and have a look at stuff. But um, Radwan turned around and he said to me, he said, you know, this is where you buy the ticket that, um, what was it, the ticket to allow you to take photographs inside. If you go into any of the temples and you don't have this ticket, they will take your camera and delete any pictures of the inside of the temples. Um, but if you get this, buy this ticket, which is a photography ticket, um, they will see your ticket and they will leave you alone and let you take pictures. He said, now, you can decide not to, but then while you're in there and you decide you want to, it's a long way back to come and get a ticket to take your, to, to be able to take photos. He said, you, if you don't get this ticket, you know, you will regret not being able to take pictures. And you know, you get there go up thinking, you know, well, your guide's gonna try and get, um, you know, he, his job is to, uh, well, look after you in some ways, but he, he's also there to get money out of you for stuff. But, you know, I went, okay, now, nah, I will follow what he says. Um, we'll see how we go. And then he goes, there's a couple of extra temples, a couple of extra tombs here that you have to pay extra to go and see. And he turns around and he goes, you know, there's, this is where King Tutankhamun's um, chamber is. Um, there's also a few others that he told me about. And he, he turned around and he said, you know, Tutankhamun's temple is basically one where you say, I've been there. Um, he said, there's nothing really that special about it. And he turned around and he goes, but the one that I recommend, if you're going to pay extra, uh, the one I recommend was, what was it? I'm trying to remember what it was. I can't even remember what it was. It was really good. Um, but yeah, he yeah he turned around and I might be able to come across a sign and that'll remind me. Um, but he said, if you're going to pay to see any extra temples, this is the one you want to see. It's only just been opened up and the artwork, um, the the the, the work on the walls is just amazing and so well preserved that if you're going to pay for one, this is the one you'd pay for. And it was, uh, well, it was an expensive ticket to go into. I think I paid about, I think it worked about $100 to get into it. So, no, it wasn't that high. I can't remember, but it was, it was it, even I, converted it back to Aussie dollars and it was like, ooh, it is pricey um, to do that. But yeah, it was worth it. A um, few of the temples, just some, a few of the tombs I did go into, I went into Ramses the IV, um, which was amazing. They were all amazing. Um, the, the work on them, the colours, it's just amazing. And you've got, what they did do was put four, four boards down and, you know, they made it where it's accessible to, and easy to see everything. So I will throw some pictures of that one in there. Um, and just a kick picture of um, the son of Ramses II, how his tomb was laid out. Um, you know, I, I think, I'm not sure whether I've said it before, but I questioned about um, being buried with like their slaves and that, you know, and, and all of that. And Radwan turned around and said, well, they, they didn't believe in that. Um, that was what all the work that was put onto the, onto the walls is a depiction of what they um, took with them. Well, it's not that they took the people with them. Um, but, yeah, so they'd have the walls of hundreds of soldiers and all the people that 
yeah, that the, that they worked around them, that they had working under them, and were all depicted on as images on the walls of these tombs. Um, it's pretty cool to see it. Let's miss that G. Uh. Oh, excuse me. Another yawn. Uh, um, so Ramses' fourth temple, they were just, um, there's one here, one image here, which is, um, you can see um, on the left is people with their heads on and on the right is people without heads. Um, that was the enemies, that was um, their enemies with their heads cut off to show um, you know that they they, they cut they removed the heads of their enemies so their enemies were no threat to them and that was what they've done there hang on any more case it's all the case but I just found another one of them ah. and then I've lost it okay um I did get a picture outside the tomb of Tutankhamun um, and I will admit there was lots of people lots of people outside that one and going in uh, and it was it was the busiest um, but as Red one said you know it's all that one's all about what people um, really wanted to see because they were told about it it's part of their um, what they know about Egypt and you know, it's, yeah, but he said you know it's not in comparison it's not really worth going into um, but um, one of the few pictures of me while I'm on holidays there's a picture of me in, in the front of two, the tomb of Tutankhamun so that's Tutankhamun's tomb um yeah then we went into Ramses the third temple took a few pictures there I might show you some you know it's just an amazing amazing what is carved into the walls of um, the burial chambers and part of something that Radwan said he said you know the rulers that have ruled for a long time have more um, the hieroglyphics on the walls there, there, there's so much more done because what happens is when um, a, a, when a new when a pharaoh dies well when a pharaoh is born and one of the kings is born um, they start right then to do their burial chamber uh, so that when they die the burial chamber is there and ready for them but the start of the burial chamber is you know the, that the very front of a very burial chamber is where all work has been completed and then as you go back further deeper in you'll see where there's work that hasn't been colored and then you'll see where it's only just the carvings alone um, but basically the longer a pharaoh is, al is alive the hang on yeah the longer a pharaoh is alive uh, the more work is done on within the um, burial chambers which is pretty cool um, so the pharaohs that didn't live for long, their chambers were not, there was not that much to it, which is where he said Tutankhamun's um, temple, burial chamber, wasn't that elaborate because he died so young. Um, they didn't have much time to actually do his burial chamber because he didn't live as a pharaoh for very long at all. Where's my magnifying glass? Hang on, I've got to just do a check. Uh, 
just certain images that my eyes just don't see. And one of them is that at sign, it just doesn't see it clearly. Um, I just picked another one that I didn't and I missed. Concentrating on trying to get just one drill out of this section. Hang on. Come on, get on there. There we go. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, the, the longer that someone has been alive, um, the more intricate. And, the, and I think it was Ramsey's the seconds was the best because of it. Um, okay, so next symbol is the S's. So the temple that I went into that was uh, the, the burial chamber, I shouldn't say temple, burial chamber that I went into was um, Seti the First and it was amazing and it was one where you weren't actually allowed to take cameras in. So basically I went in um, uh, with nothing, Radwan um, looked after my bag my handbag or my travel bag anyway um, he looked after that while I went in had my camera case the whole lot um, I was not allowed to go in with anything in my hands you know otherwise I was going to have to go right through it to make sure that there was no cameras so they really weren't allowing there wasn't even a case of slipping you know some money to get it to get to be able to take pictures which is what you were able to do in some areas but it was amazing. Um, I don't know whether I can say much more about it except the image was absolutely beautiful. Um, hang on, I'm just trying to see if I missed anything else on. So I do have a web page on in, that shows these. Um, I'm just trying to see if um, yeah. Um, I was just sorry. I was just looking to see what else I, I've done there. But that was basically it um, for that area. There we go. I knew I missed one. I hate the at symbol, I just can't seem to see it properly. Regardless of what company produces it. And now I can't get a drill out. There. Um, but, um, yeah, it was really, really, really good to see the whole, all of that. Um, those the, the burial chambers were definitely worth seeing um, yeah it was just the work that goes into the burial chambers and how long it takes to do the work you know they're doing their carvings the way they do the the burial chambers though and with the carvings they do they basically do a penciling in though and then they do a light um, carving in and then they'll do a heavy carving and then they start doing the, and then they do the colors so the amount of work that goes into just doing those is just amazing okay well let's look for any more s's <laughs> Yeah, and you'll miss some. <laughs> uh, that's a five, that's an S. Um, mm. Oops, just bouncing drills over the place. Mm. Sorry, another yawn, another yawn, always yawning. Um, so yeah, that was the Valley of the Kings, and then from there, yeah, on to the seven, went to. I need a small. Went to the 
Valley, uh, Valley of the Queens. And the Valley of the Queens wasn't even worth anything. It wasn't even worth looking at. It was just that the Valley of the Queens had actually been severely raided, so there was nothing much to see except basically the burial chambers, which had been raided of, of stuff that there was nothing to see except for the chamber itself. Even the works on the walls were nothing in comparison to the Valley of the Kings. Um, yeah, it was like still good to go and see, but um, not not worth it. Not really worth it. Um, in in the line of you know this of what you see. Um, now. From there, we went back into Luxor and went to a place um, that looked looked really funny. You know, uh, to me, it looked funny. Um, but we stopped out front of this restaurant, and it was called Snack Time. I've just got a couple here. Um, so, like, I've just spent a couple of days being sick, struggling to eat anything on the ship because I couldn't find anything I liked. Um, and then we've pulled at this place called Snack Time. Gotten into this little, tiny little elevator that fits. Um, Hang on, did I miss a bit? I did. Before we went to snack time. Um, I'm just trying to work out where else we went. There was Queen Hashapot's temple. Um, which was a very, very, very long walk. That's really funny. It's not part of. I didn't put it in my web on my web page. Can't remember much about it, but it was just amazing. Um, nothing really. Um, <sighs> is that being so? It was amazing. An amazing monument to. Um, a monument for Hashaput. Um, and I didn't put much in there about it. I can't quite remember what it was. Oh, there was just a lot of walking. It was a long walkway. I put some pictures there towards going towards it. Um, yeah, it was a lot of stuff was being done. It was in the process of being renovated. Um, renovated, <laughs> restored, and discovered, and yeah, you can see sections where um, their cordons off. I don't know whether I put them much in the way of pictures there, but I will show you where a section where they are doing restoration, where they've dug stuff up that is to go back into the temples or that belong around the temples. But yeah. Um, but it was just quite a kind of interesting place to see. It had been built into the side of the wall. Um, hang on, do I need any bees? A couple of bees. Um, yeah. So Queen Hashaput. Uh, it was her, her temple there. It's amazing how there's all these temples where they talk about the men, um, but the female queens and that, you, you don't hear much about them. But this, this one, she had a massive monument for, for her. Uh, as this, I'm working straight out of my craft mates, which is really good. One of the things about craft mates lockables is really good is that you can work directly out of the tubs, out of the containers. Okay, um, but yeah, from there we went to this restaurant called 
um, snack time. And for me, I was so sick on that ship, struggled with food, and I've gone to this place called Snack Time and I've looked at it going, oh, I can't eat. No, don't put me through more food stuff. I'm not gonna, not gonna be able to eat. And um, Red One just turned around and said, just give these a try. He didn't know that I'd been sick. Um, at that point, he didn't know that I'd been sick. And, you know, I turned around and I said, oh, look, I've been, I've been struggling with the food on the ship. I've been so sick. It's been horrible. Um, and he said, well, I will order stuff for you here and just give it all a try and see how you go. And, yeah, so I did. And I'm glad I did. I had the best meal there that I'd had for the whole time I had been away at that point. Jeez, hang on. No, I've missed a heap of bees. I've got to go back to that. Um, they came up with this platter, this tasting platter, and oh my god, you know, I tried everything on that platter, picked out what I liked the most and didn't like, and went from there. And um, yeah, I've turned around and said to the guy when he come came around with a drink for me, he I turned around and said, you know, what what's this one? Because this is the best one here. It's absolutely amazing. Loved it. Rah rah rah. And he's just turned around and goes, oh, that's Baba Ganoush. No, okay. So made sure that I remembered the name of that. And then, because when I went um, back to where I had internet, I actually did look up what Baba Ganoush was, which really surprised me. Um, but I had, I ate and I ate, and it was really a really, really, really good meal to eat. And I was really happy about it. It was like, oh, yum, you know. Near my fussy food and stomach, that was, yeah, that was absolutely brilliant. Um, while I was in the restaurant, you know, I've taken some photos. So I was on the top floor right on the balcony. Um, so I've taken some photos and I've actually able to zoom in on where I'd been before, um, Queen Hachapult's temple. Um, I was actually able to zoom in and get a picture of that from the other side of the river. Well, I was on the other side of the Nile to it. Um, so yeah, there was some good, it was a good vantage point in that restaurant. Uh, but yeah, I still remember that Baba Ganoush, it was yummy. Um, while I was sitting there, I had this gentleman come up and talk to me asked me about the tour and if they were looking after me and righty righty rah and I turned around and said, oh no, it was all good, yeah. Um, and then you know, I was telling them how, what I'd enjoyed and he turned around and he goes, well that's really good that you, you know, rah rah, yeah. Um, he said, because I'm the owner. So the guy that ran and owned Ask Aladdin Tours, Actually, he, he turned around and he said, you know, I'm the owner of Ask the Lad and it's good to see that you're enjoying what you're doing and please let me know if there's anything that wasn't right, rah, rah, rah. Um, and he gave me his, I locked him up on Facebook Messenger and he gave me the details of him and, and, and it was really great. Um, he said, you know, this is how you contact me. If you've got any issues, please let me know. Uh, any one of the staff that any one of the guides and that that you have issues with let me know rah, 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 you know type thing um, I was just impressed that I know Ask Aladdin wasn't a big tour company but I was impressed that the owner had actually come and introduced himself to me um, you know and you know took an interest in the to make sure that I, I was having a good time and being looked after um, you know, there were some things that I wasn't happy with at that point in time, but it wasn't anything that he could fix. Um, you know, one of the things that I struggled with was how close Radwan stood to me. 
But that's just personal space and that's all about where you grow up. I mean, I grew up in a country where someone within arm's reach of me, standing within arm's reach of me, that's too close. And, yeah, that's just my own personal space. Um, yeah. The issue with not having the cabin was I sent them an email afterwards to let him know what happened there or what it felt like for me. Oh, that's a D. And yes, I get it on Mr. G. Um, hang on a sec. Do, do, an individual one. Um, so yeah, snack time was um, really good feed and it was a really good way to meet um, the owner. And Luxor was actually the base for the company, Ask Aladdin. So, you know, I don't know how far away he was within Luxor from where he was, but that was um, really cool. Uh, and <clears throat> oh, just missed another one. Seven. Even when you do a small section, you miss, miss bits. So from snack time, Rad one turned around and said, okay, that's it for the tour. It's all over for the day. The rest of the day is yours to do what you want. He goes, but if you, uh, you know, yeah, no, the rest of the day is yours to do what you want. We'll take you back to where you're staying. So took me back to where I was staying. Um, got me set well not got me settled in but discussed everything with reception what I needed um, you know letting them know that I'd need a pack was it a pack lunch I don't think he asked for a pack lunch but you know got everything organized for make sure everything was there and set up for me which is really good and then we went into the courtroom area and um, you know, we sat down and he turned around and said okay so today this is it for the day if you want to go anywhere please let me know and I will come and take you I said don't leave here by yourself he goes you are safe in this area but don't leave here because you are alone he turned around and said if you actually had come with your partner or with friends it would be a different matter but because you are one person don't go out alone but if you need to I am here contact me um, he gave me his details he said contact me if you need to go anywhere he said but you'll find that everything within this area within this shop within this uh, hotel um, you shouldn't need anything else but if you want to go out let me know and we will go out and I'll take you um, so they do, they do put your safety, they do take notice of your safety. He said, there is ATMs across the road, don't use them. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't a safe ATM, <laughs> but yeah, don't use them. <laughs> oh, next one. Um, yeah, so I've gone up to my room, so I've got my keys and I've gone up to my room and wow. Um, uh, let's see if I go um, so where I stayed was the Nile Palace in Luxor um, I'll put some pictures around of it um, and my room and now my room was huge um, king size bed I had my own sitting area I had a desk you know it was absolutely beautiful um, I had a lovely that balcony nice views out of the balcony um, but the first this was the first time for me that I'd ever been in a hotel where um, there was a bidet, <laughs> so I actually had to take a picture of it. <laughs> I still have not used a bidet. I saw it, but it's like, nope, nope, nope. Um, yeah, but it's the first time I've stayed in a hotel that had a bidet. 
but it had a massive bath, a massive bath, um, and it was really, really nice, really nice. I was really happy with that room. Okay. Right. What else? Where am I at now? Just a couple of eights, I think. Um, so yeah, I will end that. Oh, well, I, I wondered actually, I did. I wandered around the complex a bit, um, trying to find somewhere for dinner. And like, I was still not that much of a hungry person. <laughs> that snack time did it for me, but um, I knew I had to find somewhere for dinner. I know for me, I it was it, it was actually a force of you've got to eat. Um, you got to find somewhere for dinner. So I pulled, found this restaurant. Uh, did I have a picture of it? Uh, but I found, I found this restaurant and they had um, on the menu, they had grilled prawns on the menu. Um, so it was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have grilled prawns. That's you know, you can't go wrong with grilled grilled prawns, you know. Uh, what did I miss? That one. Not too early. What have I got on here? No J's, no ones, no T's. I do have some D's. Um, so you go on and had these grilled prawns. Um, ordered some baba ganoush and by that time I knew what baba ganoush was which was actually uh, roasted eggplant so it was um, I was very surprised with that one Hang on. um, it's the first time I've actually enjoyed eating eggplant with this baba ganoush um, so yeah um, but yeah I went into this had this dinner um, I ordered grilled prawns. Um, if I'd actually known how they were going to come out, I wouldn't have ordered them. <laughs> because the prawns were basically, there was no preparation done to the prawns. That, oh, oh. The prawns were basically grilled whole. Um, nothing else done to them. They hadn't, it wasn't, they weren't shelled or peeled or anything like that. It was just on this flame grill um, you know it, yeah as I said if if I'd actually known that they were going to come with their shells still on them um, I wouldn't have ordered but um, it's like oh well that's what happens you know grilled prawns are totally different in every country I suppose there's a prawn to prawn but what you call Americans say shrimps um, for, for me, a grilled prawn should have had this. Yes, you'd have that little bit of tail on the end, but the meat would have been the bit on the grill and not the shell. But it was delicious. Um, so that night, you know, I had dinner. I wandered around the complex a bit. And... Actually, no, it wasn't that night. That night was I couldn't face food. I still couldn't face food. Sorry, that grilled prawn was the next, my last night in Luxor. That was the next night. Um, that night, yeah, I struggled to find food. Had, snack time had done it for me. That's why I was like humming and hurrying over it because I couldn't remember. Um, what I did find in the in the comp, within the complex was a place that did um, gelato, so ice cream. So I sat and had this ice cream and that's about all I had for dinner that night. The prawns were the next night. It's been too long since I've been on holidays. <laughs> that one's just starting to slip away, the memories of it slipping away. Um, but yeah, it was, um, I basically that night I relaxed in the room, did my, um, updated my web page uh, let everybody know where, where I was all that right well 
uh, and in the morning um, was the next lot of tours. I had tours for the day planned for them for, to do. Um, but yeah, I will take you through those. I will say in the morning, the following morning, when I got up, the view from my room was spectacular. You know, it had gorgeous night views, but the view from my room in the morning was just beautiful. Um, so yeah, I will leave that there. I think I've gone long enough. Uh, so the next uh, day is, uh, is it that one? No, day eight. Day eight, um, which was an interesting day uh, because I will go into the story, but it was because, not just because of what I saw, but the day that day was there was a bombing in another part of Egypt so I'll talk a bit about that um, but yeah uh, I will say thank you guys for listening uh, stay tuned for the next lot of adventures and I know it is a long been a long time between videos um, just getting back into the swing of doing things again um, so I will talk to you later and uh, thank you for listening We'll say, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, um, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, so it's, what do you think of where I've been in Egypt so far? Um, I will put in the in the information box a link to um, the playlist for this trip so that uh, you can go back and have a look at stuff that you haven't seen. Um, but yeah, please uh, hit the subscribe button and um, once you've hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you'll be updated when I do more uploads. And I will say my uploads at the moment are very random um, and very different stuff. Um, so yeah, yet again, <laughs> what do I say to you every time in my videos? Waffling on towards the end of my video. Um, but thank you guys for listening and joining me on this little bit of a trip um, with, uh, on uh, two days of Egypt. And I will talk to you later and bye for now.